So, 2023 has been a big year for games. We've got some of the best games ever released. The revenue in this industry has reached a all-time high, but we've also seen some of the biggest layoffs in this industry ever. And being in the industry myself now, the thought of losing my job becomes so real. Which also got me thinking how hard it is now for new artists to break into the industry since there's so many people competing for the same job right now. If you've been on game dev Twitter or LinkedIn, you can feel how intense and the desperation from these aspiring artists now. There was also a recent debate on how hard should an artist work on their crafts in order to get a job in the gaming industry. Some say you should put all your effort into building your portfolio and then you can chill after you got your first job. While others think that will make you burned out and lose all your motivations. Well, I don't have the answer to that, but I thought it would be a good idea to share some of my personal experience of how I went from an engineer into a gaming industry as an artist without an art degree. It's kind of a crazy journey looking back. So for some context, I live in Taiwan and I graduated from college with a computer science degree. At that time, I already had a job offer ready for me from Yahoo to work as a software engineer. It was back around like 2019, 2020, where a software engineer was really popular, like the hottest job on the market. Everyone in like math or engineer majors wanted to get into coding or at least had some coding experience so they can become a software engineer. And since I already got a degree and a job that so many people wanted, I thought I was gonna do fine, right? I was pretty confident about the future at that time. I thought I was just gonna become a software engineer. I'm gonna make a lot of money, eventually work at some big company like Google or Facebook and have a happy life. Well, it turns out I couldn't be more wrong of what's waiting ahead of me. On the first day of my job, I instantly felt a disconnection of my work and also to my colleagues. And even though I knew right off the bat that engineering isn't for me, I still thought it was just because I'm not familiar to the workflow yet. And once I get familiar and better, then it will be all gone. I never thought that it would be something deeper like where my passion is or the purpose of my life. Eventually, during that time, I got really depressed and I was very emotional and I also cried a lot easily. Like every time I watched a Gary V video screaming at me, why aren't you quitting your job yet? I like burst into tears every time because that's what I want to do so bad. And I remember there were two things that really made me thought that engineering might not be for me. The first one is one time my colleagues were discussing about a bug that's been in the code base for a while. So they have to find out which version the bug started, right? And turns out there is a version control command called git bisect that's exactly for this. And I remember one of them got so excited and said, yes, finally have the chance to use this command. And my first thought was, why are you getting so excited about a version control command? And then my second thought was, why am I not excited like him, you know? We are all engineers and this should be what I'm excited about. And if those people that are so passionate about this is who I'm competing with, then I wouldn't stand a chance if I really want to make it in this industry. And another thing is I started to pay attention to my manager's day-to-day -day life, like what he does, what problems does he have to solve, because I thought if I really want to do this, then in 10 years, that would be my position, right? But then I realized the amount of pressure and the kind of problem that he solves, which might be interesting for him, but it's just really boring and draining for me. And that made me realize even if I really pushed through and climbed the corporate ladder and become a manager one day, that won't be the life that I want. So during that time of being a software engineer, I keep thinking about what is it that I really want to do. And the idea of becoming an artist just keeps growing bigger and bigger. And it didn't come surprisingly too, you know. Growing up, I took weekly lessons learning traditional art. And that three hours every week was a time that I really enjoyed where I can escape from my schoolwork and academics and just enjoy art. Also in college, I took a Photoshop course and then I started helping out with like graphic designs for student events. And when I started working and making money, I bought my first iPad and an Apple Pencil. And I remember the first day when I got it, I like stayed up all night drawing a portrait because it was just so fun for me. So eventually I've quit my job as a software engineer after eight months. 
I saved up enough money and luckily got the support from my family. So I decided to move back home to save rent. And my plan at that time was to give myself a year to learn all the art fundamentals, become really good, and eventually get to work as an illustrator or concept artist in the gaming industry. I had a plan all set up. I got a syllabus of learning art fundamentals. I'm gonna do anatomy this week and perspective next week and then lighting, shape language, color theory, composition. I was basically drawing every single minute I was awake and for every day, weekends included. And surprisingly, that didn't feel burnt out for me at all. I was really enjoying the process. I even thought to myself like, if I'm dying tomorrow, this is probably what I'm gonna keep doing. Because even though I'm not where I want to be yet, this is a necessary path for me to take, and I'm just really happy that I decided to go for it. Well, unfortunately, that drive didn't last forever for me. After six months, I've gathered quite some amount of work, and I made a portfolio out of it. So I started to apply into illustration or concept art jobs, and looking bad, that portfolio is so bad, it's like pretty amateur and not very suited for the gaming industry. Not to mention the insane amount of competition there is in the illustration and concept art world. But I was pretty proud of it myself. So when the rejection started coming back, it was still pretty tough to accept. I've also been doing social media on the side, mostly on Instagram and a little bit of YouTube, but I only got a thousand followers on Instagram at that time, so that wasn't working out too. I did some freelance work for some friends, like logo designs or portrait commissions, but it was mostly free work and nothing that I could make it into a career of. I bet it on myself and wanted to make this art thing work and make myself a full-time artist, but after six months, all I got was failure. I feel like I've hit the wall and don't know where to go from there. And then a video completely changed my life. It was a series called So You Wanna Make Games by Riot Games. And in the series, it took us through the whole pipeline of making a game. From concept, to modeling, to animation, to VFX, to audio, to UI. And really opened my eyes that art isn't just illustrations and concept, it's everything in a game. Because when you think about it, game is just made out of thin air, right? It doesn't exist in the real world. So everything needs to be made by someone and designed by someone. And that someone means it's a job for an artist in the industry. I was so stuck on the idea that only illustration and concept art can be counted as art, but actually there's other forms of art like animation and modeling and VFX that all requires artistic skills but just in a different form. And I was especially drawn to a field called technical art at that time because just by the name, it feels like the perfect mix for me. I have the technical background and I'm also interested in art. So I just pivoted from my concept art and illustration course, started to learn technical art by myself. I started to learn how to use Unity and Unreal Engine, learning about materials and shader. I started writing tools extension for Photoshop and participated in game jams just to get some experience. And I was learning pretty fast because all the coding and math fundamentals was there already for me. It's just I need to get familiar with how to apply them into a gaming development environment. So after three months, I've gathered some work and made a tech art portfolio and started to apply to jobs that's more on the engineering side, but anything that slightly has to do with rendering or VFX. You know, after all, there isn't a big gaming industry here in Taiwan, so we don't have like specific jobs for tech art. So I'm just really applying to anything I can find that's kind of related. And even though my portfolio was still kind of amateur this time, I was getting a lot more interviews. And honestly, that's just because I'm applying to more engineer side of roles. And I got that computer science degree, so it made it a lot easier. Sometimes that's just how things work. So a degree is useful in some certain contexts. Eventually, I landed a job as a software engineer at a outsourcing gaming studio here in Taipei. So I finally ended my one year journey trying to become an artist without any income. So even though my title was a software engineer at the company, I talked with my manager during the interview and expressed my interest in art. So we agreed to let me do more stuff on technical art or VFX. Our studio was mostly doing outsourcing work, but I was put on a team on an internal project 
which means I have a lot of time to explore different techniques and get familiar with Unreal Engine. And during that time, I was getting paid while I was learning about the engine, which is really amazing and also really good for my mental health. If I had to go another year without any income, learning stuff on my own, I think the anxiety would really make me quit. My plan at that time was to keep honing my skills and get familiar with Unreal Engine, and eventually, after two or three years, started applying to bigger studios as a VFX artist. And even though I was getting paid, the salary compared to what I was making before as a software engineer, it's more than a 50% pay cut. And this is something very common in the gaming industry, like the same title with similar job qualifications. The job in games will be paid much lower than the job in tech because everybody wants to work on a game, but not many people want to work on a database or a cloud infrastructure. So as someone who's worked on both sides in the tech and gaming industry, I can definitely say for me that working on games is so much more fun and fulfilling for me, but at what cost? During that time, I wrote down a letter to my future self. This is what I wrote. I don't know if you still remember, but money has been constantly on your mind right now. Now I'm making half of what I used to make, and it's been really hard to see all my peers earning more than me. I'm definitely happier and loving the gaming industry more than tech, but is it worth the pay cut? One thing I always think about is even if I made it as a VFX artist, is it worth the money compared to what I could have made as a software engineer? I guess the ultimate question is, how much would you give up to do something you love as a living? Is it $5,000 a year or $10,000 a year? Or is my dream a priceless goal that I should pursue no matter what? I hope you have the answers already. And honestly, I still don't. Being able to make your passion into your job is definitely something worth pursuing, but having that financial stability and not having anxiety every time you want to buy something is also really important. So money has been a major source of pressure for me at that time. That's why when I hit the one year mark at that job, I decided to ask for a raise, which turns out to be the most life-changing decision in my art journey. So one day I just asked my manager, hey, can we talk about like a potential salary raise since I'm here for a year already and I think I'm doing a good job. And during that meeting, not only did I get rejected, I also felt kind of humiliated even. Honestly, if he just said, we hope we could give you a raise, but honestly, that's just not in our budget right now, I'll be totally fine and accept it. But instead, he decided to diminish my contribution to the team and saying he could find other people that could do the tech art and VFX, despite I'm the only one that understands Niagara at the company. He also says that the stuff that I do, he can find other people to do it too, I'm just doing it faster, and suggests to me that instead of asking for a raise, I should just focus on doing my best work and the money will come naturally, which is like a major red flag. If your employer ever said that to you, please be prepared to run. And that's exactly what I did. So the first day after the meeting, I was so angry and filled with rage that gave me the push to start looking for bigger opportunities. That was my plan for two to three years from now, but suddenly I wanted to do it right now because I wanted to leave so badly. I started to do two things. I made more stylized VFX work. Second, I've made sure to publish them on all social medias. So even though the work I do at work is more in the realism side, I still apply those knowledges and make my own stylized VFX. And every time I finish a piece, I'll post it to LinkedIn, ArtStation, Twitter, and the real-time VFX forum. These four are like the four major sites for VFX artists. And after some posts, I started to get some attention and likes from artists or recruiters from big companies like Blizzard, Riot. And one day, the artist from Tuatara reached out to me on LinkedIn to connect. And if you don't know yet, Tuatara is a outsourcing VFX company that provides VFX service to Valorant, Fortnite, and other big projects. It's a pretty cool company. So obviously Tuatara was a big inspiration and 
my dream company at that time. So I immediately reached out to her and asked if they are hiring for junior artists, even though there isn't an opening on their website. Instead, she gave me the CEO's email and encouraged me to just introduce myself and ask him if they're hiring. And that's what I did. So that email turned into an interview and another interview and eventually a offer as a VFX artist. Fast forward to now, I'm already a VFX artist working on Fortnite for a little over a year right now. And looking back, if my previous manager didn't say what he said or even just agreed to give me the raise, I wouldn't have the motivation or courage to pursue big opportunities like this. My plans were to start applying to these big studios after two or three years from that job and suddenly I'm already at where I dreamed of, all because my manager decided to say no. So sometimes that's really a blessing in disguise. I'm working on one of the biggest games right now as a VFX artist, loving what I do. I have amazing colleagues and the best work-life balance I ever had in my career. So if you're still thinking about chasing your dreams and become a full-time artist, although I might be pretty biased, but I say, fuck it, go for it. And yeah, that's the story of how I became a full-time artist without an art degree. If you have any questions about this journey, please comment down below. I'm happy to answer all of them. And I'm planning on a future video about all the resources I use to teach myself art, including like Gumroad assets or YouTube courses or websites. So remember to stay tuned if that's what you're interested in. And as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.